In this tutorial, I'll show you how to calculate impulse. Now in the world of physics, impulse is a force that acts on an object over a short period of time. Think of a baseball being hit by a bat. The force between the bat and the ball occurs very quickly, and that's what we're interested in here. In fact, you can calculate this force by taking the change in momentum and dividing it by the change in time. This is what the relationship looks like. So I have force is equal to the change in momentum, I'll represent the change using delta. And remember the formula for momentum, I'll represent it by the letter P, is equal to the mass times velocity. So the change in mass times velocity over the change in time. Now we can actually use this relationship whenever we want to calculate the velocity of an object after it's been struck. And you'll see shortly with this example. So here we have a 1.2 kilogram croquet ball moving at 2.0 meters per second is struck from behind by the impulse force shown below. What is the final velocity of the croquet ball? Now the first thing that I want to do here is find the initial momentum. Because in order for us to use this formula eventually, remember that the change in mv actually means mv final minus mv initial. So let's begin by finding mv initial, and from there we can actually work this out. So the momentum initially is equal to the mass of 1.2 kilograms multiplied to the velocity of 2.0 meters per second. Multiplying this out, we should get 2.4 kilograms times meters per one second. Now it turns out that by finding the area underneath this triangle, let me highlight it for you, you've actually found the change in momentum. So technically speaking, if I were to solve for the change in momentum here, and force was a function of time, we would have an equation that looks like this, where I have force as a function of time times delta t is equal to delta mv. Notice that I multiplied both sides of the equation by delta t to achieve the following. So by finding the area underneath here, we've actually found out the left side of the equation. Sometimes this graph might be a parabola, sometimes it might be a different shape. And for that case, you might need to use higher level mathematics such as calculus to be able to take the integral of the function on the left side of the equation. We won't be doing that in this case, but I'm just saying it in case you're studying this at a higher level. So the area underneath that triangle represents the right side here. Now how do we find the area of a triangle? It's actually not bad. Remember, area of a triangle, you don't even need to know any integrals here. It is base times height, and you know it, divided by 2. Right? This is something that we learned very early in our lives. So the base is from here to here, that's a distance of 0 0.20. The height is 100 newtons. And dividing that by 2 gives us the area that we're looking for. Using my calculator, 0 0.2 times 100 divided by 2 makes 10. 10 newtons times seconds. And remember, newtons is kilograms times meters per second squared. Therefore, if you multiply this unit with S, you end up with 10 kilograms times meters per second. And those are the units for momentum. So that's the change in momentum. And looking back here, remember I said delta mv represents mv final minus mv initial. Therefore, this should equal to 10. That we already found to be 2.4. So I have mv final minus 2.4 is equal to 10. Rearranging 10 plus 2.4. This means that the final momentum, mv, is equal to 12.4 kilograms times meters per second. And of course, we can now calculate the final velocity by isolating for v. If we divide both sides by the value of m being 1.2, we will 
have V isolated. So 12.4 divided by 1.2 makes 10.3 meters per second. And there you have it. That is our quick tutorial on how to calculate impulse.